some siphon, siphoning in the pot. You can see the color. Um, and my guess is it's on this can. This can is still kind of hot. I have not had that happen before with any canning lid. Now let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can, can you see that? That would not be safe to put on the, sh actually it's got it in two places. That would not be safe to put on the shelf. Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Brandy. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the, our channel, Sewing Back. Today I'm gonna have um, an, another canning video. Um, hopefully you saw my last video and I had a huge harvest of collard greens and carrots coming out of my garden. And today I am working on preparing um, my collards. I've already washed them about four, five, four to five times where I've emptied my water out. You wanna wash your greens really well. So one, you can get any creepy crawlies that can be in there. You could even dilute a vinegar solution that can help aid in that. It also can get any soil off. Soils can carry um, bacteria and things like that that you don't want. And you certainly don't want it in your canned items that you're trying to put on your shelf so they're shelf stable. Um, today I am planning on doing this canning project in my Nesco canner. It's the same thing as a carry canner if you have it. Um, I will say if you have questions about the electric canners, um, they do not have third-party testing. So the USDA um, has not endorsed most of these canners. So you have to do your own research. I have. There are people who have done third-party testing. And that is a large portion or large reason that I picked the Nesco canner. I will tell you to do your own research. It's out there for you to find. And I'm comfortable using it. I also live at a lower elevation. Um, a lot of these electric canners and the issues that they've had um, come into play in higher elevations. So <clears throat> that's what I found in my research. It may be totally different now. There are some people who will not recommend these canners. So, you know, I'm just being honest and putting that out there. I think that these canners, if you feel comfortable with using them, they actually can offer a lot of great benefit. One, for smaller, uh, kind of like what I'm doing, smaller batched canning. They're really nice. You don't have to lug out that huge thing and have all the jars. You can do four or five jars and put four or five jars on your shelf. And that is nice because if you can go a little, a little, a little, a little, and a little, and a little, it is a lot easier sometimes than these massive batches of canning or having to collect enough in freezer space or whatnot until you have enough to can. So, um, <clears throat> that's, that's one of the great things. The other thing is if you have uh, a glass electric stovetop, a lot of the stovetop canners are not rated for those. Some people use them anyway. <laughs> um, I don't have that. I have a gas cooktop um, and that's all I've had. So I could, I've always been able to have a cooktop canner. I do have one and there are times when I really utilize using it because I have more than four or five jars. But a lot of times, I have four or five jars and being able to use this electric canner is really becoming kind of a game changer for me. So if you do not have an electric canner, you can totally pressure can your collard greens on the stove top with a traditional canner. Um, you do need a pressure canner. These are low acid foods and they have to be pressure canned. So um, what I'm doing right now is I have my greens soaking in the last batch um, of water solution as I have been cleaning them. And I'm kind of going through and making some more, uh, make them a little bit smaller pieces. And if I feel anything that's just really tough and I don't feel like 
yeah that's probably too far gone some of mine were starting to go to seed I tried not to collect those parts um, because they can be bitter and they can be tough um, but um, if there's anything I've missed I'm trying to catch that now um, before I get those greens uh, in some water to blanch them you're not gonna cook them down like you would your collard greens I have a video on how to do that if you just want to eat some fresh greens um, <clears throat> But what I do want to do um, is I really want to put my greens um, in my canner with my um, pot liquor. Alright guys, so in my pan here, this is the one I want to get my, um, um, I'm trying to think of the, the right terminology, pot liquor, sorry. So I'm wanting to get my pot liquor started in this pan, but to make a good pot liquor, it's gonna take a little bit of time. And that's why I'm getting this going because I don't totally have my greens totally ready to submerge and blanch and start canning. I wanna build this so it can build those flavors so that my collard greens out of a can are gonna taste like my collard greens if I were to cook them right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my infused olive oils. I use different ones just depending. Today I want, I'm going to use my maple smoked bacon um, infused olive oil and I'm going to put some of this in my pan. You don't need a whole lot. I probably have probably a, a healthy tablespoon and I'm going to turn it on. And all I'm going to do in this right now is I'm going to saute my diced up onion <clears throat> into my pan. Oh, yeah, I forgot to get my sugar down. So the spices that you're going to use, you're going to use some salt, some sugar. Um, I use red pepper flakes and I also have started using my little special pepper grinder stuff. Um, you, you don't have to have that, but I like to use that. I have a Cabernet, I don't know how to say the second part, <laughs> not a big wine connoisseur, Savant, Sav, I don't know how you say it. I have that. I had some, it was just downstairs. I opened it up and because I didn't have any open wine in the refrigerator and because I use red wine in my... Um, pot liquor. So this is going to get a little warm and then I'm going to saute the onion and I took my ham hock and I cut it up into chunks. Some of it won't cut because of the bone and that's okay and you want that bone because that's going to add a lot of flavor. But once I get my onions going then I will add in this ham kind of diced ham hock now it looks different because it has been cut um, instead of left whole you could do a whole ham hock I've done that many a times I bought this so I could kind of dice it up um, instead of having a whole one to make it a little bit easier in the canning process because I'm hoping to get a little bit of the meat in each jar I'm going to put a little salt with these onions. You don't have to go crazy on the salt. And some of my pepper, grain. This one just has different varieties of pepper corns in it. And I just want to kind of saute this. So the big thing about if you're going to do the pot liquor method, you're going to have to pressure can it on that meat time versus a green time. And because you're gonna have that meat in it. Um, and so it will, if you read the ball book, I have my old ball book right here. This is the old blue book. This one's from like 19, um, 
I think I lost the page. This one was from like 1990, I think, or something like that. My husband found it at like Goodwill. And it has some recipes the newer ones don't have, so I like it. But this one says four greens. That means Swiss chard, kale, mustard, spinach, turnips, um, any kind of wild green, poke greens, uh, well, it's just poke salad, and collards, any other green. You want to wash your greens thoroughly, changing the water several times and discarding the old water, getting rid of your stems and your tough pieces. You heat your greens until wilted in just enough water to prevent sticking, okay? And then you're gonna, um, <clears throat> you're gonna, it says then you should cut your greens again so that they're a little bit finer, or not finer, but smaller, bite size, I guess, pieces so they're not huge. And you're gonna put them in hot jars with leaving an inch of head space and you're gonna ladle over um, hot boiling water. Well, I'm not going to do the hot boiling water. I'm going to be doing my pot liquor. And if you were doing, um, I think this is honestly going to be pretty close to the one if you're with the meat because it says for you put on your two piece cap lid, all that stuff, you have one inch of head space. But you're going to, for quarts, you're going to cook for 90 minutes. And for pounds, I mean pints, you're going to do um, 70 minutes. And so I think that's pretty close to what the meat would be. But I'm going to double check that. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm putting in my ham hock. And I have one piece that's pretty much bone, but it has like the marrow and stuff in it. So you don't want to discount that flavor. You want that being in with your pot liquor. It's just gonna, it's gonna give you a good flavor. Now, I always use a quart of bone broth. Typically I have used bone beef bone broth. I'm out of that. And like I said, moving forward, I think I'm just going to make generic bone broth where I have whatever bones I have, beef or chicken. I always put the chicken feet um, in my broth. I tried to get turkey feet from my person, but they sold out. Um, they just had a few. And, but I did buy my chicken feet and because that adds the really rich collagen to it. So... Alright, so I'm opening this up and I'm going to pour this in. And then you want to put, I put almost as much water. So I'm going to get some of that now. And I just kind of eyeball, I put vinegar in, I put my wine in, I just pour some in. I have never measured it, so I couldn't really tell you. So I did half a, um, so I did a pint of some water. I'm put in here. <clears throat> and now I'm going to pour in some of my wine. I'm thinking it's probably roughly about a cup. And I've always used red wine. I'm sure I read it somewhere. I don't know. I'm not a big wine connoisseur, so I don't know. I just know it gives you a really nice finished flavored product. Then I put in some vinegar. Um, Probably a half a cup. And again, I don't really measure. I'll put in some more salt. I do put in sugar. I don't measure that either. Um, let me find a spoon or something. I'll say probably a fourth of a cup. 
maybe not quite a fourth of a cup. That helps with the bitterness and the greens. And it kind of, when you have the vinegar, the sweet, the wine, the bone broth, it really, you really get a rich, um, to me, the flavor is very similar if you like like a hot and sour soup. That flavor that has, um, it's got some heat, has a little sweet, and, um, and a little sour and tang to it. It's really good. And that's how I like to make my collard greens. And I'll put a little bit more of the pepper flakes. In there and then well that was the ground pepper and then I'm gonna put my pepper flakes that is really personal preference if you like it really spicy then you would put more not so spicy I usually put about a cap full um, I learned I could tend to make them a little hot and while I definitely have people in my family who like them like that for some some of the folks in my family it was a bit much um, it was too hot so you can always add stuff like that you can put some hot sauce things like that after the fact if you want more heat but try to think about who all might consume this and will it be palatable to them so I am now gonna move this back it's hot I'm gonna move this back to this back eye so it can I've got my low eye on the back one and I can just have it low and slow and simmer. I'm probably going to add a little bit more water, probably another pint of water to that. And that's that's it for that part. So I will see you back in a little bit when we're ready to wilt our greens and get them in the jars and we're ready to pour our pot liquor over. So as you can see here, I have wilted my greens. Um, it's funny, I had a ton of greens, but once you wilt them, it's not so much. So I had three quarts large mouth quart jars that I thought I was going to be able to fill with greens, but it turned out I only had enough greens to fill two of them. So I took the third jar, and as you'll see in a moment, I used to fill pot liquor, my leftover pot liquor with that, because I didn't want my canner to be um, unbalanced in the canning process. You could also do just water, can a, can a jar of water if you have that happen to you. Um, so now you see I'm pouring over my um, pot liquor, I'm making sure to get some of the ham hock in each of them, and then I just go ahead and, and use the rest to, to fill up a jar of the pot liquor. This can be great, just like a broth. Um, so now I did the salt. I did, I think, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm debubbling, which is so important. Don't forget the debubbling portion of it. And then I'm going to take a, um, a clean rag after I have double checked my headspace. And I am going to wipe all of my rims. And then I'm going to use my superb uh, lids, which I got from Azure. I can link them in the description for the canning process. Super easy. I've got my jars in here. I have two that actually have collard greens after I wilted all of that down. This is pot liquor. I'm just canning it up with it. And you need eight cups of water to go in the canner. Because these are quarts, we're going to be pressure canning these for 90 minutes. I'm going to lock it up. Turn it to exhaust. Okay, and then on here, we're going to hit high. We're going to hit timer for 90 minutes. And then we're going to hit start. It can take 30 minutes to come up to pressure. At that point, it'll say E10. It'll count down to E0. Once it hits E0, it beeps. You turn to airtight and it does the rest. When it says off, you unplug it. You let it sit for an hour or longer and you're done. Super easy. I'll show you tomorrow morning what they look like when they come out. You unlock it. 
and you lift it up. And this one, okay, so this one was pot liquor that I decided to can so that it was more balanced in the canner. Um, and I use superb lids I got from Azure. And this one has buckled. Um, hang on, I'll show you. These other two that have the greens in it did not. That's what they look like homegrown collard greens with the pot liquor in it and they look pretty good so I'm gonna set them over here <clears throat> that one looks really good as well that looks like defect to me I would not use that but what I will do is I'll put it I'm gonna let it finish cooling down and then I'll put it in the fridge. And the reason I did this is because I thought it would be good in like some rice or something. I can use it like a stock. Um, so I'll just put it, once it's cool, I'll put this in the fridge and I'll use it this week. So no, no harm, no foul. If you have questions about the uh, Nesco carry canner, <clears throat> I will be happy to answer those. Just leave them down in the comments. Um, if you have any questions about the Presto uh, stovetop canner, I can also uh, answer questions about that one since that's the one I've primarily used. And But for two jars, you know, or three jars of collard greens, that would have been a real pain to get out the big canner. Um, to do all that, I would have had to probably put some other jars with water in it to balance it out. Having this other one where you can do stuff on a much smaller scale is beneficial. So, um, anyway, with that, um, I don't know what I'll can next. I'll figure something to can. I don't know. I've done chicken this week. I have canned chicken, collard greens, carrots, and... I still have blackberries in the freezer to make jam that I need to do so but my boy's coming home today he's been gone on a mission trip all week so we get him back I'm excited to hear all about his trip and um, spring break is this coming week and we have a big fencing project to work on so I'm praying we have good weather and garden projects still some more seeds to start um, and all the things excited about that <clears throat> so anyway with that I need a cup of coffee and I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time bye